All right, so we are entering unit two um, with a discussion about preconditioners. Okay, so as you see, uh, we have three sections on, on preconditioners, and uh, let's, let's go over the simplest one first. So this introduces you to smoothers slash preconditioners that are, or local preconditioners. They are, could include Jacobi, Garcetto, block versions of them. Um, it introduces you to other preconditioners that are built into ng-solve, like the, the direct solve preconditioner, which is just using a sparse factorization to precondition. Um, geometric multigrid, an algebraic multigrid implemented inside ng-solve in the core code and a, a BDDC preconditioner. Uh, BDDC stands for balancing domain decomposition with constraints. Um, we'll see more about this BDDC preconditioner uh, in, 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 in the, the next two sections. Okay. Okay, so as you know, preconditioners are very useful to reduce the condition number when you try to solve a linear system coming from finite elements. And when the linear system is, is, is huge, this makes a big difference. Uh, but just to introduce the concepts here, we will work with small linear systems. Uh, and then maybe we'll have one uh, or two examples with a, with a, with a large system. Uh, and later on Wednesday, there'll be MPI sessions which r show the power of uh, preconditioners in, in, a, in a distributed memory environment. Okay, so. In order to understand, uh, in order to make a simple test to understand preconditioners, here's a here's a uh, a Python function. What it does is to solve a problem using a preconditioner. Uh, and let's look at it. Let, let's look at its steps. There are, you give it a mesh size, a polynomial degree, and the number of levels of refinement, and then it'll refine a given a, a given mesh. This is a coarse mesh size. It'll, starting from that mesh size. It creates a mesh, then it refines, um, however many times specified by levels, and solves the problem there. So here's a, here's a simple code. You have a mesh. You could do 2D or 3D. The, this is, uh, the rest of the commands are immaterial, whether you're in 2D or 3D. Take the Lagrange space. You have a bilinear form, which is the same old grad U, grad V. You have a linear form with a F equals 1. And you have a preconditioner. Whatever is the preconditioner, you give us input. Um, and if you look through this loop, this is solving at every refinement level. You have a mesh refine. After after a mesh is refined, you have to update the finite element space so that it knows that the degrees of freedom has changed. And the grid function must also be updated. You assemble the new matrices and you send it to the conjugate gradient solver. You have to do two different sets of uh, commands if you do if you if you if you condensed or not as we've seen in static condensation, or you just hit it with the solvers.bvp and not worry about it. And then the conjugate gradient solver reports the steps, and this function reports back to you the steps. And by looking at the number of number of steps, number of iterations of conjugate gradient performed, we can sort of judge the efficiency of the preconditioner. Okay, so. That's that's a simple function. Let's 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 look at how 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 good this preconditioner called local preconditioner is. Okay, this is a built-in preconditioner in in uh, NGSol. Okay, this local precon all it does is to do a point Jacobi preconditioner, which means it takes a diagonal of the, the assembled matrix, take the inverse of that matrix, preconditions. So it's a very simple preconditioner. It's not, don't expect it to do miracles, but, but it does something. Okay, so the output of this is, is two things. Uh, and the, if you look at the two things, the two things are the number of degrees of freedom and the number of steps the conjugate gradient takes. Okay, so here the number of degrees of freedom is just eight. And the conjugate gradient took four steps to converge. Okay, very small problem. Now, if you do nine levels of refinement, it has become a larger problem. So you can see that the mesh has become much finer. It's going, 
Yeah. <laughs> okay, so we have uh, we've solved on nine levels, and you, you you see the results from the nine levels. From eight degrees of freedom, we've gone to 100, 200,000 degrees of freedom. And the number of iterations that conjugate and performed are also increasing from four to nine to 25 to 50. Looks like the number of iterations are going, are increasing by a factor of two, whereas the degrees of freedom are more or less increasing by a factor of four. Okay. All right, so keep in, keep in mind this, this local preconditioner. Uh, let's look at a multigrid preconditioner now. Okay, we use the same routine. Now we, we're gonna solve for nine levels, but now instead of preconditioner equals local, we put in a, the built-in multigrid preconditioner of NGSolve. Okay. It's gonna start from the coarse mesh here and keep refining, keep solving. And at some point, the graphics window uh, doesn't update the mesh refinements. And you see how, the, how this was much faster than before. Right? And, you, and you see the, the reason for why this was much faster. This, the number of iterations have essentially, essentially remained the same, no matter how many levels of refinement you do. So this is, uh, this is typical of, of multigrid. Uh, Multigrid gives you an optimal al algorithm in complexity and in condition number. Okay. If you wish to visualize in matplotlib, this is how the iterations go. Like uh, you have a multigrid number of number of iterations in multigrid becoming essentially constant, whereas the other ones keep on increasing. The, the local preconditioner keeps on giving increasing number of iterations. Okay, uh, so some uh, some background that, that you should know about about the built-in multigrid preconditioner. In order to understand the background, this background, you need to understand how the degrees of freedom or the shape functions are stored in, in NGSolve. NGSolve uses a, a hierarchical basis for for most finite element spaces. In the H1 case, this this means you can divide the space into edge shape functions face shape functions and cell or interior shape functions. So the entire finite element space V or VHP can be decomposed into these edge, small spaces corresponding to each edge, small spaces corresponding to each face, and small spaces corresponding to each cell. And then a leftover. The leftover is a space corresponding to, the, to vertices, but that's the lowest order Lagrange finite element space. If this is the highest order Lagrange finite element space, then this equality says that this highest order Lagrange finite element space can be divided into the coarse lowest order Lagrange finite element space plus these small spaces corresponding to each edges. Okay, and corresponding to this space decomposition, there is a matrix decomposition. The matrix de decomposition has a lowest order block here corresponding to the lowest order uh, Lagrange finite element, and the edge blocks, the face blocks, and the cell blocks, and, and all their couplings. All right, so um, with this in mind, what uh, we should know about, mul about the multigrid Im implementation in NGSolve is that multigrid smooths at the finest level, but when it goes down to the to the next levels, it uses this coarse, uh, the lowest order block, and it, do, it only does multigrid for the lowest order block as we go down the levels. So let me try to make this a little more palatable to read. Okay, so in this experiment that we've just done, we've, we've solved the problem using the multigrid preconditioners for varying P. The polynomial degree has, is changing from one to 10, and you do the same problem over and over again for, for a series of refinement levels. So if you look at P equals one row, you see the, n the number of degrees of freedom keeping P equals one, but on multiple levels of refinement. Similarly, when P equals two, these are the degrees of freedom and the, the, uh, as the refinement level increases. So you can see how 
the iteration numbers change with respect to H or the refinement level when you read through the rows. Whereas you can see how the iteration numbers change with respect to P if you read through the columns. So these are the iteration numbers as P increases on a fixed mesh. As you can see, as P increases, these numbers increase. Right? These, uh, there's, a, there's, there's a column by column increase, and then there's a, a whereas if you look at the, at the rows, uh, let's say one of the rows like this, you see the iteration numbers are more or less constant. They have 19, 20, 20, but they do increase with P as you go down on, along a column. Along, along this column, for example, it's 7, 8, 12, 16, 20, 23, 26, 28. So there, there is a slight increase with respect to P. You can eliminate, uh, almost eliminate, this increase by doing static condensation, which we already discussed before. You just say condense equals true in your bilinear form. This, this flag gets passed. In, in our function, this flag gets passed down to the, to the bilinear form. You can have an idea of what happens when you turn on condense equals true. All right. Let's. Okay. You see that as polynomial degree increased, the iteration numbers did not, well, did not change at all. Same here, same here. Compare with the, with the previous scenario where it increased from 2 to 20. Here it increased from 2 to 5 and then stayed 5. Okay, uh, so static condensation comes uh, with, with these advantages, uh, even though you have to internally condense out the matrices and so forth. The final example in this uh, pre tutorial on built-in preconditioners is the element-wise uh, BDDC preconditioner. Okay, all we have to do is to pass the flag uh, BDDC into into conjugate gradients or in, into this into this solve problem that we defined at the, the top of the tutorial. Okay. So without knowing what exactly this precondition is doing, let's just look at how it, how it performs, and then we'll, we will talk about this in more detail in another tutorial. Okay, so... Um, this, uh, by just just looking at the, uh, the at the timing or informally looking at the timing, it looks like this finished pretty much at the same time as this, or perhaps even a little faster. The iteration counts, however, are are are, are higher. If you look at the iteration counts, they are certainly higher than multigrid. Yet it finished almost at the same time, or perhaps even faster, because the BDDC preconditioner is is made so that the work per iteration is lower than the work per iteration in multigrid. So even though multigrid does fewer iterations, the cost per iteration um, is factored into the, uh, must be factored in when evaluating the preconditioner. Uh, 